Okay, uh, so first, some fire exit announcement. You probably saw it several times today. Fire exit are there, so I will go. Uh, okay, mm. migrating ASP.NET legacy large application is a big challenge, and most of the companies and developers are afraid of facing with. So today I will go with you step by step, by step uh, through that process and, showing you, and show you my way to do that. My presentation has two goals. First of all is show the migration that I did like a few months ago and show you that it is possible and it is not so hard to do and it is nothing to afraid with. Second goal is to show you all knowledge that I learned during that process. Uh, but firstly, I would like to introduce myself. I'm .NET geek. I'm working with .NET for more than 11 years. And last few years, I spent in the cloud. I'm working in GrayPub. And I'm helping our clients to do the digital transformation and go to, go to the cloud. Uh, before I start, I would like to ask you a few questions. First one is, who of you can call yourself a .NET developer? Okay, so that's good. And second one, who of you ever make the CF push? Okay, so it's not so bad. <laughs> okay, uh, unlike the other, other presentation that you saw today, I will for forget about .NET Core. For us, .NET Core doesn't exist, as I would like to show you that even, um, even old legacy .NET framework application, even web form application, is, is good to, to be in the cloud. And it, is, and it gives you a lot of benefits, and there is nothing, nothing hard with doing that. Uh, un unfortunately, we couldn't use containers as application, as Windows Server 2012, that of this, most of this application is using now, and because of some dependency, we couldn't use the 2016, or we're afraid that our application will not work to, correctly in 2016, it's not, not supporting it. But still, uh, Cloud Foundry allow us to start that application. Okay, first, when we start going through the migration process, we, would, we need to make some goals and decide to do some goals. Uh, our was, we have three milestones. First one was continuous integration, so we would like to implement in our application full pipeline, starting from building application, second, run some unit test, the, last, the next one was focused on the uh, Cloud Foundry, so we would like to deploy our application dynamically to the, our Cloud Foundry environment, and using that Cloud Foundry environment, we would like to start some acceptance test based on it. Second milestone is allow, uh, allow pipeline to create our release, a reusable package, then by one click, this is the best solution, give the operator way to deploy it to any environment that you want, UAT, uh, QA and production. The last goal was to allow uh, operator to, to go to the production in easy way and ensure that all, all issues that will be found there will be easy to roll back. So uh, we got the requirement that we should have green, uh, blue green deployment and also pre prod environment. Uh, as you see, you, we, our goals were not so, so hard to do, and we don't force to make all 12 factors in our application as we would like to uh, avoid huge refactoring that will be needed when we would like to go to the core, especially with, application, with that type of application. Uh, first of all, we also go through the existing process. Uh, unfortunately, Nothing could be reused, as it is like I see the smiles on your uh, on your faces. I like it is standard on that type of application. So all all steps till now were fully for full manually. 
uh, manual builds on developer machines, then developers just move this application manually to some dev environment, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes it goes to QA, again manually, and even deployment to production services were also manual. Even that it was vertically scaled, there were free instances, all, all steps were manual. So now let's go through the application. Uh, application is a teenager. Uh, it's 12 years old, written in SP.NET web forms. Uh, some code is dated back to uh, .NET 1.1. .1. Uh, application required to have installed on the machines some custom uh, providers. In that case, it was Oracle, Crystal Reports, and some custom archiving tool. Uh, our hopes that, that this will be sessionless was, of course, go away as application use database to store the session. So, yeah, we can vertically scale application, but we still have the, uh, the we could have issue with database. Uh, and the last issue that we found, uh, the, bigger, the biggest one, was the usage of Active Directory. As in the solution, we have several applications, and one of them, the internal one, was using uh, Windows Identity. Uh, also, this was not all issues. Uh, we have another smaller, like, for example, some of the third-party web services used mutual authentication and required some certificates, even with private keys, installed on this machine on, in the local store. So, as you can imagine, Someone can say that yeah, this application is unable to go to the cloud, but I don't agree. It can go to the cloud with really only small, small refactoring needed. Okay, as we already know the process that we that that, that we start with, as we know the application, and we can start migration process. But to do that, first we need to uh, choose the CI/CD tool uh, based on some. Rec internal policies and some uh, license stuff, we, we have only two to choose. First one was on-premise TF, on TFS, and second one was concourse. We talk about TFS and we're thinking about it. We have, we know that it has few advantages and some disadvantages. The, uh, the most important from our perspective uh, advantage was integrated work tracker, integrated NuGet, and Active Directory integration. So all, everything what developers know till now can be reused. But the biggest disadvantage for the TFS on-premise is lack of CI-CD process written as a code or script or anything that could be stored in, some, in Git or anywhere else and that could be reused. Uh, good information for everyone is that VSTS, the online version of TFS, have already this, that support. So there is a pretty good hope that soon even on-premise version will have it. Of course, it was released three months ago, so you know everyone needs to test it and check what the first, how the first version uh, works, but the, there is still some hope. Uh, if we talk about concourse, uh, it has totally different advantages and it's totally different than that we know from the TFS. But from our perspective, it provides a very similar uh, functionality. Our first advantage of using concourse is a Docker. So based on using the containers, we are able to, uh, we are sure that our builds are immutable and each build is, is in totally new container made a second, second very, very important from our perspective is Cloud Foundry integration. For Cloud Foundry, there is made special resource inside uh, the concourse that we can use. We could, do not need to, to create any custom PowerShell scripts to push our application. The integration is very smooth. Uh, we can also use the same type uh, of uh, authentication as we have in Cloud Foundry, for example, Open Out. Uh, unlike TFS, it allows us to use multi-resources and uh, trigger the application if any of them change. So we can uh, have our source code in different Git, the pipelines definition in different one, and also, for example, some 
uh, some other build scripts in the, in the next one. So we can do that. In TFS, we are not able to do that, even in the VSTS, that one, that online version. Uh, and the last, the biggest one uh, compared to the TFS advantage is CS, CICD definition. Uh, it is written now in YAML. It, this definition are, are very nice, are very easy to compare and to maintain. Uh, the biggest disadvantage at this time is not integrated NuGet and not created NuGet resources. So every time when we will push our application to the, for example, to NuGet after build it, we are not able in concourse to observe it and trigger the next pipeline, for example, deploying pipeline when we have next version there. After consider all, all pros and cons, we decided to use concourse, especially that after a small POC, we check that in easy way we are able to use Maven to store, uh, to store, to use, use Maven to store, for example, in Nexus or inside that TFS, uh, our, our versions. Okay, so as we have already all tools and all processes and all our migration path uh, cho chosen, we can uh, start migration. So first thing that we need to do if we talk about .NET, ASP, ASP.NET uh, Web Forms application and Windows 2012 is configure our virtual machines. Unfortunately, we have not Docker, so we can do it uh, automatic dynamically when we deploy application, we need to install some part, some stuff inside the virtual machines. In case of concourse, it was, of course, MS build, web deploy, and some custom tools that we are using, like Crystal, Crystal, uh, Crystal Reports, Oracle, Oracle Data Provider, and any other custom tools required by application. Uh, we needed also install IIS and uh, Google Chrome, but after I will talk later about it more. Uh, in case of PCF, virtual machine, our virtual machine needed to have only uh, this custom tool that is required by the application. Okay, so everything is prepared, so we can execute CF push. But before we doing it, we need to build application. Uh, like it is also common in the old, old application, we were not able to even easily build it as the concourse required that application will build on totally clean machine uh, without any specific uh, configuration. Our application, of course, requires that DLLs are in, in some exact folder, so all developers' machines are set up in that way. It is un unacceptable in case of concourse, so it needs to be totally clean up. Uh, after already clean up, uh, the next thing that we need to handle is using a different version of MS Build. In our solution, we needed to use it. And Microsoft, I need to say that didn't show off. Uh, because if we even install this MS Build everywhere, it could be the MS Build will be with different path. There is no like store that show as the path to different version of MS Build. So we did very small workaround, set up own custom variables, custom environment variables in, in the inside concourse, so we were able easy to manage it. Uh, after we pushed this application, the first issue that we saw that it warm up very, very, very long. Uh, so our acceptance test were, give us a lot of issues, and also our vertical scale was very hard to do as it was not so smooth because even if we got some instance, now we get like timeouts or even two minutes response because of the warm up. So we needed to, uh, so we decided to pre compile all SP.NET pages. Uh, to do that, on, in concourse, we needed IIS. It, is, it works like that, as, we, as you probably know. So we installed it. Uh, the next issue that we found after that. Uh, so you need to remember that pre-compilation are financially go through all ASP.NET pages. Even that one that are blocked by feature toggles or were implemented 10 years ago and are not, not anymore used, all of them need to work. So again, some cleanup. But, you know, it was like half a day or something like that, so this is not a big deal. Okay, so our application is built. 
we are we are fine with with uh, we, we are in the point that we can upload it to our pass. Uh, in Clan Founder, to run a uh, legacy SP.NET application, we use HWC build pack. This build pack is using uh, is using self-hosted uh, WebCore API that run on IIS when you run or run that exe, and that run your single application. Uh, so. So, so we are able to use it in that way. Uh, I, will, I will let you know more in a few moments about that. Uh, so to push application to our CF, we need also to have the YAML files with some definition about the routing, URLs, a lot of stuff. Of course, we don't want to hard code this, this, this type of files in our source, source code. So we would like to make it dynamically based on some environment variables. Unfortunately, uh, the, there is only one PowerShell module that supports us with that, but after one day test, we saw that it do not give us uh, sufficient functionality that we need, and the YAML that is produced is not in good shape, so we decided to use Python. Again, we need to install it on Concourse if we would like to use only Windows machines. Uh, in some cases, we, we can use, for example, Linux machines, so in that cases, we can, we can use it. Okay, so we have already the manifest prepare. We have our YAML files, so we can we we could deploy it to uh, PCF. The integration between Concourse and Cloud Foundry is so in so good way that there was no any issues that and our application was pushed out and start working. Uh, but unfortunately, it started working. We start some uh, manual uh, tests. And we found some issues, several. So this was not so bad as we, as we were uh, thinking at the beginning. Uh, the, now at the, this slide I'm showing the, I think that most important issues, issues that I think all application that you will push to the uh, cloud funder that are web forms that you will have. The first issue uh, was when we have several instances, in case, for example, two and our postback go to the different instance than the previous one. Because we don't have sticky session, we don't know, we, we don't want that. The first issue that we saw that view state couldn't be decrypted. And it couldn't be decrypted because they are using different machine keys. So again, need to work around, set, set machine key in the, on an application level. There is no way to, to different work around it. Uh, next issue was with request context. You need to know that router that is used by uh, Cloud Foundry mess up it quite sig significantly. Uh, for example, all ports will be totally different, all IPs will be totally different, so all our redirects that we have, for example, in our application, uh, ASP.NET tight that we are also sometimes using, will have totally wrong, wrong URLs. So you need to remember that all, all the usages of it need to be refactored. Next thing is store location. For example, for certificates. Every place and in your application that you are using local machines need to be changed. Best to current user, because it is enough, as when Cloud Foundry is starting new, 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 new instance, create, in case of Windows 2012, virtual container that is nothing, nothing more than the new user just create totally new user, so we are sure that these users are immutable, so next time when we start the application, there will be totally new users. So if we install our certificate, put some registry entries, anything that our application uh, required in context of that user, we can easily use that. The next one was the biggest one. This one, we, s we spent a lot of time of that, and unfortunately, there is no way to work around it. We couldn't use Windows Identity in, in, in uh, Cloud Foundry. Uh, for us, it was the good decision from the uh, PO that there is no problem with that because this is only internal application and only admin use it. So we can change it to uh, forms authentication and writing the custom code. We just hit this, this uh, Active Directory via LDAP provider and Ask and ask for all data. Uh, 
The next thing is the custom on management and health function. I will do not say that this is refactory, because this is not something that we need to change in our application. But if you would like to, to have any application in Cloud Foundry, we need to remember that there is no way to contact to that server. For example, if we would like to debug any issue in our application, there, is, there are limited ways. So we need to create these custom pages by us own. We can create them like REST, uh, REST endpoints like it was shown on the previous, uh, previous, uh, previous presentation. Only thing that you need to remember is that if you will have any issues in free things, in free places like web configs, global ASACs, and uh, any handlers, you are not able to debug your application in, in managed points at all. Because this managed point will do not start at all in that case. So all debugging in web config need to be done in different way. Okay, next part, as we have already application started, uh, tested in manually was the acceptance test. Uh, I need to say that I was very surprised that there was no any big issues with Selenium running on concourse and uh, connecting with SP.NET web form application. Uh, only very s two small issues was, uh, first, Selenium don't like update panels. I think no one like. <laughs> Second one, uh, some the latest version of headless mode that we are using in Concourse that we are forced to, uh, is not able to deal with our checkbox. I don't know why, but it don't like. There is workaround, just simply send some space bar or something like that, it, it will work. And also Selenium was the reason why we, in, we needed to install Chrome inside, uh, inside Concourse. Because we were using Chrome headless mode, so Chrome need to be there. Okay, so we have first milestone, right? The application is working in PCF. On the dev environment, it passed some acceptance test. It also passed some uh, manual test, but this is not our final goal, as we would like to have application that could be uh, published to the several type of the servers. So we need to ensure that our configuration will be removed from the source code. And in SP uh, web forms, we have web config file that contains everything that we talk, if we talk about configurations. So there was a two way. First, massive massive application refactoring and, for example, change all the settings, read all settings from environment variables inside the global assets, for example, and change, and change these values. It requires some refactoring, but also in some cases it is even not possible because you need to remember that you are not able to change, for example, at all session object configuration session of global asset because it will restart your application. And you can have a loop, you can have a lot of issues. Or the same is with certificates. They need to be set up before you start your application. Uh, so we decided to use custom build pack. Custom build pack is nothing, custom build pack to prepare our application before our application is started and prepare our, let's say, let's call it virtual container. So create, so prepare our user to work with our application. Uh, our custom build car was nothing more than set of PowerShell scripts that we run when, before HWC started. So we use, so we got just HWC build pack and customize it to do some, some code. So first of all, we needed to prepare the configuration. First, we read it from the uh, environment variables then we download some files from the Git, like certificates, like, uh, trans like XDT files, the XML uh, document transformation that we use to set up correctly our web config. So still web config was there in the application, but it was totally empty. And everything that need to be, need to be there was done by PowerShell and XDT scripts. So, so application could use that. And next thing was install our certificates in, in user storage. And next one, to do not refactor application a lot because it was, this application was using local, local file system like probably most of the SPNet legacy application. 
So in that cases, the easy work on was just to create network drive in context of user while during the uh, our build pack start, and then just change the paths to this network drive. For SP.NET, there is no any differences if this is local file system or this is map network drives. And also, we do not need any credentials in the application, anything there, because everything will be done by PowerShell scripts. And with this few workarounds, we were able to uh, separate our application source code and our configuration. So we can go to the next part of the, of the transformation on our migration. Uh, so to, to do the release, there was only a few small steps to do. First one was correct versioning. In case of concourse, there is a way to use def default bumps. You need also only to remember that uh, to connect it with the, for example, your uh, assembly information, you are, again need to have some PowerShell script that will change it or will change your MS build script. For versioning, we was using semantic versioning. And also, we needed to produce some smoke test the production one that could be uh, even run on the production environment. And the last, last part was create scripts for Brugmin deployment that will change our environment variables and our ro routings uh, to the correct server if we, if we know that previous one is working or not, if, that, if it's not working. OK, so the truth that, yeah, application is migrated. Application is working on several environments. We can set up as many environments as we want. We can have as many instances and as we want, and everything working in, in Cloud Foundry. But we couldn't say that it's, it's a cloud native application. There is a lot more to do, best to have all 12, 12 factors. Uh, but even if we don't want to have 12 factors, there is still some part that we can very easily to do in case of ASP.NET applications. It is log and telemetry. We can use Grafana, Application Insight, or any, any tool that you know and you like. Uh, there is good to think to add Sonar to the application, to the, cloud, uh, to the CICD. Uh, also, splitting the big solution that we have, it was not so big because only 17 projects dif different that have dependency to each other. But splitting it to the multiple solution using NuGet to have it totally dependency is very important. And why? Because you need to, you need to know that if you have automatically deployment, if you will have continuous delivery, that if you make any code change, you would like to deploy this application. If you have situation that you have five, six, seven applications in your solution and you make change in one of them, you, you don't want to deploy all of them in the same time. So it should be done by NuGet dependencies. Uh, also, the total minimum, and I don't say that it is ultimate solution, but total minimum is move your session from uh, database, for example, to the Redis. It will make it like twice faster. The, the latest the things, the latest uh, statistics show, show that. Uh, and for all new features, make this feature totally sessionless. I put this feature in separate microservices. And of course, if you have budget, if you have time, start refactoring previous application. But we know how, how it looks like. OK, so thank you very much to came here. I know that this is very late uh, for you, and you are probably very tired. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer it now. Uh, if, if also, if you would like to talk to me later or tomorrow, you can find me at the Grape Pub Bowl.